All right, everybody, welcome to the top eight from the Illinois State Championships. We had, uh, I want to say, not too exciting top 16 match, but Ross took down Jay Witz in the top 16. Um, they were pretty ugly games, so let's hope for some more exciting, fast-paced ones in this round. We're going to have two Illinois players from this one. Nick Walls, uh, a local player, he I don't think he's actually been playing for too long. This is kind of his breakout tournament here, and we have him going up against Hondo Luna, who's having a huge year so far. Took second place at the Mississippi Valley Regional Championship, which we covered already, and he is back here in the top eight of the Illinois State Championship. So uh, it's interesting to follow his story, his kind of like rise up through the Pokemon TCG. He is definitely one of the rising stars, at least in this area, and I'm excited to get to see him play once again. So here we go. We're going to jump right into the top eight match. Uh, right here we see they're just shuffling up, getting ready to go. Uh, I know Hondo is running an electric deck. It's kind of like an old-fashioned one, though. It's it's like electric with Mewtwo and Bufalant. That's what Hondo was running. So it's a switch from the Garbodor deck that he ran at regionals. Definitely much different. Um... And we'll, we'll see how it works out. I, I don't know if he's running lasers or anything like that. But we'll, we'll definitely find out in this series it's the best 2 out of 3. 75 minutes. Plenty of time. Nick, on the other hand, is running a Darkrai deck. So we'll see everyone's favorite cards. We'll see Darkrai EX. We'll see a Hypnotoxic Laser. You know, we'll, we'll see all the good stuff. So this will be an exciting matchup. It's kind of like the old versus the new. Darkrai is... Well, actually, Darkrai is kind of old now, too. Man, I'm getting old, too, if Dark is old. Um, we'll see what happens. These guys are friends. They know each other. They know each other's list, I'm sure. So this is going to be a real laid-back match. But it's going to be some good stuff, I'm sure. Both these guys are good players, solid players. We all know Hondo's very good. We saw him rise up through, um, you know, uh, Mississippi Valley Regionals. Sorry. I'm very tired. You're going to have some... Weird commentary to get through, that's for sure. Um, but bear with me. But yeah, we know he's a great player. He got all the way to the finals and a heartbreaking loss to Andrew Kreckler at that tournament. And we'll see if he can rebound with a win here. Nick, on the other hand, we don't have too much recorded footage of him. I know he's a solid player, but we'll, we'll see just what he's made of in this series. Uh, I don't know the intricacies of his deck. I don't know if he runs any techs with the Darkrai. Uh, I thought I saw Landris while he was shuffling, so that could be big. And we'll see who goes first. Looks like Honda will go first, which is a huge sigh of relief because I saw he's starting with a lone Tynamo. <laughs> so uh, he can wipe the sweat off his brow for a second here. He is surviving the first turn at the very least. And we're just going to wait for everybody to set up here. I don't know. Uh, I actually don't know who wins this matchup. To be completely honest, you know, historically, Darkrai has dominated Electric. No question there. Darkrai has always been on the winning end. I mean, sure, Electric decks beat Darkrai every once in a while, but for the most part, it's been a pretty solid, you know, like 60%, maybe even 70% win rate in Darkrai's favor over the course of the history of Darkrai's existence. So here we go, we have a Tynamo versus a Mewtwo, and you can see Nick smirk a little bit, because he knew. Oh, if only, if only he had gone first. This game could have been over. But we do have that lone Tynamo from Hondo. We'll see where he goes from here. Now he's got, uh, looks like a Skyla and an N. You gotta wonder which one he's gonna play here. Uh, he's, I don't know, it depends on what he plays in his deck. He's also got Sky Arrow Bridge. Which, uh, actually, I'm not sure if I saw Sky Arrow, but he's going to go for the end. Um, I, I like that play much better than playing a Skyla there. At best, the Skyla is going to get you one Pokemon, because clearly you have to search for a Pokemon. You know, you got to get an Ultra Ball or a Level Ball. If you don't, it's just Double Coalesce, Mewtwo, Game Over with X Ball. And, yeah, uh, so... I don't know. Electric is a deck that needs to get those Tynamos into play as soon as possible. You need to get three, four Tynamos on board to use Dynamotor. And then you can power up your attackers. Now this version of Electric uh, is actually less reliant on getting those two, three, four Electrics into play. Because 
the attackers retain the energy. You know, he's got Mewtwo, he's got Buffalant. Those are going to be the focus of the deck. Uh, and we do see he does get another Tynamo into play. If, it looks like he plays a Spark Tynamo. It's an interesting play. Most people just go for Thunder Wave Tynamos. But he'll get three Tynamos in play turn one. That is huge. And he's just going to take a look through his deck and see if anything is prized. So the first thing you always look for as the electric player is, do I have Tynamos prized? Because if you do, if you're playing with three Tynamos, one is prized, your deck becomes a lot weaker, honestly. Because you got to expect your opponent's going to target down those Tynamos, those electrics, right away. So if one goes down right away, and you're only left with two, it gets ugly pretty quickly, because you got to expect the Darkrai deck to go after your electrics. And then you're, all of a sudden you're left with one electric in play. And that's not so good. So it's a slippery slope when you have Tynamo's prized. And it looks like one might be prized for Hondo. I'm not too sure. Now he does not have an energy in this hand. Not that I could see. He does have uh, a Mewtwo that I saw. He's just going to take a look one more time through his deck. So we can see this is a deck that focuses around bulky Bufalon with Eviolite, Max Potion. It's kind of an old school way to play this deck. Doesn't play Rayquaza EX. And, uh, you know, this has been an interesting tournament. It, it's kind of been like we're going back to the basics with all this stuff. Nothing real new from Plasma Storm has made a big impact here besides, you know, Hypnotoxic Laser. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's whatever. Uh, it looks like Nick plays... You know, I'm not actually sure if this is a Darkrai deck anymore. Oh, I just saw Darkrai. Okay. So it looks like we got a uh, Full Art Chair, which Hondo is <laughs> taking a look at. And, uh-oh, a Landris and a Switch. What kind of Dark Ride deck is this? We see a Landris, a Mewtwo, and a Tornadus. That's, ouch. Uh, that is Tynamo's worst enemy, Mr. Landris. Uh, he hammerheads, knocks out the Tynamo, hits another one for 30. Ugh. That is a rough start for Hondo. He's, he really doesn't have anything to respond immediately. Man. Where is he going to go from here? And Nick will take the first prize here. F draws first blood here in the top eight. And we'll see how Hondo responds from here. Now this, I said having a Tynamo prize is a slippery slope. Landorus also is a very slippery slope. If you cannot evolve one of your Tynamos, this turn, all it takes is a catcher, hammerhead, and all of a sudden two Tynamos are gone all three of your Tynamos are gone, in fact, on turn two. So you got to hope for something good here. Now he is going to catch her up, uh, looks like Tornadus, and go for a computer search. Discard Switch and Mewtwo. And we'll see what he grabs here. Well, maybe we won't. Well, his other card with Juniper. So uh, <laughs> we'll see what he grabbed. So you don't have to show your opponent what uh, card you take with computer search. A lot of people make that mistake. But you can actually hide that information for it from uh, from your opponent. We can all see though. <laughs> all right. So now, what did he grab here? Looks like a Buffalant and a Juniper. Okay, there's no Tynamo prize, so he does have another one. But, man, he really needs to evolve into Electric here. And it looks like he will. We do have an Electric. Uh, ideally, he would love to pull off a Gold Breaker this turn, but it doesn't look like that is going to happen here. He does have one Lightning in hand, so he can Ultra Ball that away and use Dynamotor. Benching that Dynamo here opens up a strange scenario for him. Uh, if he evolves, it looks like he's just going to attach to, okay, this is a, a very smart thing to do. He's going to attach to the active Tynamo, retreat, and then he can Dynamo to the bench Buffalot. Now, the reason this is so smart is he could not afford to evolve any Tynamo but that one. If he did, it would just be a catcher, and then he can knock out uh, both Tynamos at once because that he wouldn't have evolved the, the, the Tynamo with 30 damage on it. So he avoided a big play there, giving up two prizes. Very smart move from Hondo. 
You can tell he really knows the matchup. He knows how to play against Landorus very well. I'm um, impressed with that play so far. And we'll see how Nick will respond this turn. You got to think he's going to keep trying to go after those uh, Tynamos if he has catchers. Otherwise, I'm not sure what he's going to do. Now, this has been an interesting deck from Nick so far. I don't know if this is a Darkrai deck or not. I thought, I swore I saw a Darkrai in his hand, <laughs> but I don't think there is a Darkrai. Uh, I, I'm not even going to guess anymore. We see a laser. It might just be big basics, you know, Tornadus, Landers, Mewtwo. That is a very common deck as well. And we see a Tails on the Hypnotoxic laser. No Verbank City Gym in play yet. And where will Nick go from here? Uh, we have an Ultra Ball. He's getting rid of a Retrieval and a Fighting. I'm assuming this means he has a Juniper. He's discarding a bunch of cards here. He's played a Laser. And we'll see what he takes with this Ultra Ball. It looks like a second Landris, so all right. False Alarm, guys. Sorry. No Darkrai. At least not that I know of. <laughs> uh, oops. I was misinformed by the judging staff. They told me this was a dark ride deck. Just shaking my head. But uh, it's alright. We'll recover. It's now a big basic deck with Landers, Tornadus, and Mewtwo. <laughs> so this changes the dynamic completely. Uh, we have another laser, so for sure Nick is going to play um, a Juniper, and there we go. He puts that Bufalant to sleep. It's kind of a waste of two lasers there, but if you have the Juniper... You have to Juniper. What can you do? Now again, Nick is going to be trying to knock out a Tynamo this turn or that Electric. Well, preferably that Electric. I mean, we'll see if he can do that. He needs a Pokemon Catcher. If not, at the very least, you would hope he has a Stadium. So then he could blow through for at least 40. Uh, otherwise, he's going to have to just retreat to his Landorus. And Hammerhead for 40 and 30 somewhere. And no, he's just going to keep that Tornadus active and blow through for 10 to that Bufalant because of that Boofer ability. And then we have 10 from the Poison. So a fairly uneventful turn from Nick. I guess he did not want to discard that Double Callus to retreat. He would rather just keep the energy on there, hit for 10, and work with that. So Hondo here, he does have a switch. He's going to switch into Bufalon. It looks like he uh, honestly just revolves around Bufalon in this deck. And here we go. Here's an end. This is a big turn. If he gets a double colorless energy, he can gold breaker for 120 damage. If not, he's going to have to pass it off to Nick. And Nick will have an opportunity to be more aggressive, target down more eels and Tynamos, and go from there. I really don't know how this matchup goes. It's not one we see very often. I'm not sure who the favorite is. You got to think if Hondo can survive the early onslaught of Landris's Hammerhead, which does 30 and 30 to a benched Pokemon, then he'll be a favorite. But if Nick can get enough early prizes, then he'll probably end up winning. Now, an interesting card in. Oh, the sixth card was the DCE. Wow, that was huge. An interesting card we saw in Hondo's hand was Pokemon Center. We do not see that very often in the electric decks, but that could be huge here. Uh, he's opting not to play it because he knows Nick plays Burbank City Gym. So he wants to save it to counter the Burbank City Gym. Maybe it's worth it to play the Pokemon Center there. If you can heal 10 from your electric, or heal 20 from your electric, putting it down to 10. And that would change the math completely and would take away an option for Landris to, to catch her that out and hammerhead it for 60 for the knockout. But Hondo is thinking, you know what? If my opponent gets, you know, 30 damage lasers, it's probably not good for me. So I want to make sure I win the stadium war. I'm going to wait until he plays the Burbank, and then I'm going to go from there. We see a giant cape, I believe, going onto the Bufalon. So there's an interesting twist. Normally we would see Eviolite with these kind of decks. Uh, and oh, a scramble switch. So another twist in turn here. All sorts of crazy stuff going on. Maybe that's why Nick didn't retreat the previous turn. And he's going to go for a fighting here. If he gets a fighting energy, he can use Land's Judgment, knock out that Bufalant, and boom, there's the fighting. And just like that, that is the power of Scramble Switch. 
Incredible play there from Nick. Catching Hondo off guard. And that is just a very, very strong move from Nick. And he'll, you know, take one more prize, improve on his advantage. And he has a fully powered Landris up there with no damage. Wow. How do you deal with this if you're Hondo? Well, you do have two electrics in play. Unfortunately, you only have one lightning energy in the discard pile. And that means you can only dynamo her once. Now, in a perfect world, I mean, you would just gold breaker this turn maybe for 120, set up that Landris. Uh, otherwise, what is your option here? You can attack with Mewtwo. And this is just kind of what happens with the electric decks. If you're not set up quickly enough, it's just, it's going to get overpowered by a lot of stuff, especially Landris. This has got to be a rough matchup, you got to think. And we do see an Ultra Ball. That's going to allow him to discard that Lightning, which, you know, it, it will allow him to Dynamo her twice. He's got some decisions on what to discard here, a very unfortunate situation. He's got Ultra Ball. Uh, he can discard a Lightning. That's the easy choice. But does he get rid of the Switch or the Pokemon Center? He was not... Uh, uh, he, he would not like to discard that Pokemon Center. But he also doesn't want to discard the Switch because he wants to be able to attack this turn. So what does he decide to discard? Ugh. That is brutal. And he discards the Switch, favoring the Pokemon Center. Man. I guess he really wants to heal that 20 off of his Pokemon at some point. He really does not want to lose the Stadium War. And all right. Here we go. Here comes the big boy. Here comes Mewtwo. Now stuff's about to get serious. Uh, I mean, way. Nick has given Hondo no choice but to bring out the big man Mewtwo, who of course has defined this game for the past year or so, with X-Ball just being a ridiculous attack. We're going back to last year's states, folks. Mewtwo Electric, here we go. Now we have a Bianca for five. And let's see what he gets off of these five cards. Now he does have uh, an Eevee Light. He will put that on his Mewtwo. And then I will assume that he's going to attach to the Dynamo. Dynamo or twice now that there is a second electric in the discard pile. And X-Ball, this Landris for 120 damage. There will be six energy between them. And kind of put the pressure back on Nick, who honestly does not have any energy attached to his Pokemon outside of the Landris, which is under fire here. So that Eevee Light is going to do, uh, it's going to do a lot of stuff. It's going to, obviously he'll take 20 less damage from any Landris attacks, but also it's going to force Nick to have a combination of cards to knock out the Mewtwo this turn. He, the easiest one would be a laser and a Verbank, but we saw Nick use two lasers early on, so that's not going to be so easy. Another thing would be like a plus power uh, and also a laser. Uh, I guess he could have a combination of two of those. And uh oh, he's going for it. Here's a switch. He could also have a DC and energy switch. And there is the Skyla. So Nick, just like that, he's saying, I got Mewtwo too, brother. Uh, and all right, he's going to Skyla for the Verbank City Gym. And here we go. All it takes is a laser now. And even with Eevee Light, not even Mewtwo can withstand a laser. <laughs> that is the moral of the story here. Not even Mewtwo can survive a laser. And uh, we get the Verbank City Gym. There's the Hypnotoxic Laser. And boom, there goes Mewtwo just like that. Pew, pew, down goes the Mewtwo. And Nick has taken a four-prize lead here in this first game. And you got to wonder, where does Hondo go from here? He's just, he's got a lot of damage on Nick's board, but he just can't quite finish off these Pokemon. It's brutal so far. And, uh, you know, these guys do know each other, so it's still kind of a, a laid-back kind of a game. But uh, these guys are going to have fun. Uh, trust me, both of them definitely want to win. They definitely want to beat the other guy. You know, there's always friendly competition between friends, that is for sure. And, all right, Hondo, he really doesn't have much in his hand anymore. But uh, he's going to play a Pokemon Center that he's been holding on to. He's going to get rid of that a Verbank City Gym. He's going to put Double Colas on the active. Uh, I understand his thought process there. Let's see. 
If he gets a third electric into play, he could still attack, I suppose. And he's got an end. He top deck that. There we go. But it's going to be really tough for him to pull off an attack this turn, you would think. Um, if he gets a switch, he could Dynamotor 1 to the Tynamo. Um, switch into it. Dynamotor back to the Buffalo and then retreat and Gold Breaker. The other option would be to get a third electric and triple dynamotor to his bench Buffalant for uh, and then just retreat and then gold breaker that way. He's going to need some combination of cards to pull this off though and it's not easy either way considering he has used a, a couple switches I believe. But hey, there's an ultra ball so he's going to be able to pull something off here. And I guess he'll start to put some pressure on. Now, this can be a very big turn for Hondo. He has a catcher as well. He can catch her up that Landris with all the energy on it. And he Pokemon centers that damage off, says, get out of here. Um, he's going to Ultra Ball for that Electric, the third one. This is where Electric starts to get very dangerous. When you can just get tons of energy and play every turn. Mewtwo's get powered up in an instant. Bouflons get powered up immediately. All sorts of stuff is going on here. Uh, and if he can cut out that Landris, take that out of play, he's going to take two prizes. Bouflon only gives up one, so that's good. And there we go. He's going to catch her up Landris. And are we seeing the start of a comeback here? I don't know. Uh, we did have N getting, or Nick got N down to two prizes. Or, <laughs> I cannot talk today. And Nick had two prizes, so Anne will give him two cards, which means he could fizzle out in this game. That is my point here. All right, so Nick needs an energy to X-Ball for a knockout here. If he doesn't get an energy, he has to X-Ball for 80, and then all of a sudden Hondo is in a great position. He can just goal breaker. Uh, Nick did Pokemon Center off 20 from his Tornadus. That's pretty nice. But man, if he doesn't have any energy, he can't get a knockout this turn. And all of a sudden, he's going to be under a ton of pressure. N is definitely the biggest comeback card in the format. Oh man, this could be a huge comeback for Hondo. It looked like he was pretty much over and done with, but games are never over with the almighty N. That is for sure. Now, what does Nick have? He did take a lot of prizes very quickly. Now this is, I mean, obviously a good thing because it, it progresses you towards winning the game. But when you have so many cards left in your deck, it makes you very vulnerable to N. And with EX Pokemon, you can very easily just kind of lose four prizes, six prizes in a matter of three, four turns. That can happen. And when you have so many dead cards left in your deck at this point in the game and you get N and you only draw two, your odds of drawing good cards at this point in the game are very low so it's very common to see a player jump very far ahead early on in the game and then their opponent will play an N and they, they just draw nothing the rest of the game and watch as their lead evaporates and we could see that happening here now we do see a catcher from Nick that's gonna force Hunter to have a switch to get out of this that's for sure and just an X ball for 40 so not a great turn there can Hondo capitalize on this golden opportunity he was given from N? Uh, where does he go from here? Does he have a switch, first of all? That Electric has a two retreat cost. That is the one downside of Electric, that high retreat cost. So he's going to have to make a decision here. Uh, looks like he's got a Zekrom as well. So, man, this is just old-fashioned Zekrom Electric Mewtwo with the new Bufalon. Now, interesting choice. He decided to Juniper instead of Skyla. Maybe he's out of switches. That might be the only reason he would do that. Uh, he was fortunate enough to draw double colorless to retreat off that seventh card. <laughs> Not bad. And all of a sudden, I think Hondo is going to make a big comeback here. He's got Evilet on the Bufalon. That's going to make Mewtwo need a double colorless to knock out the Bufalon. And he will be able to retreat his electric this turn. Things are starting to spiral out of control for Nick. 
I got to say, I didn't think the Bufflon electric version would have enough power to make a comeback like this. But, you know, every day I get proven wrong with this format, with N, with all the tools at everyone's disposal. Cards are just so powerful these days, I should not be surprised at all when someone makes a big comeback. All right, here comes Bufalant. We do have the DCE Electric is retreating. We will have a Dynamotor. There's at least one Lightning in the discard pile still. And let's see. It's an interesting decision on where you want a Dynamotor. I guess you would go to Bufalant here. Might as well. Uh, that Zekrom is actually going to be huge. It's uh, kind of his finisher, I would say. I can knock out Tornadus no matter what. And uh, if you're Nick, you really just have to top deck something in like the next one or two turns. Uh, honestly, he might need to top deck this turn or he could be done for. Huh. This is just how quickly things can swing around, that is for sure. Goldbreaker does 120 to Mewtwo. Nick's going to heal 20 more off his Tornadus. We do have a Verbank City Gym. Does he have a laser to go with it? It would be his fourth laser. I don't know. That Pokemon Center was doing work, though. Uh, healed off and electric. But, you know... Ah, I mean, if Nick... He can still pull off a win, that's for sure. But he's going to have to top deck something, obviously. He just does not have, an, not have any options in his hand right now. He's going to be able to X-Ball for 60. That's really his only option. That or he can just retreat to Bufalant and then just kind of sit there and say, all right, if you don't have a catcher, we're going to sit here for a while because Bufalant doesn't actually do much damage to Bufalant, ironically. It's kind of the opposite of Mewtwo Wars. Bufalant Wars take forever. <laughs> kind of imagine... You know, those two goats ramming their heads into each other until one gets knocked out. That's kind of what Bufalot Wars are like. But Nick is going to choose to X-Ball for 60 instead. And, all right, that's going to give Hondo an opening to a, a goal breaker for 120 damage. Let's see. And he will tie the game up at two prizes each. Is he going to do anything else this turn? Uh, he's got some options, I suppose. He does have a Max Potion. He has a Juniper. But looks like he is just going to Gold Breaker for the knockout. Tie the game up at two prizes each. And here we go. How will Nick respond here? He promotes his Landris. I see a shiny card in his hand, but uh, I don't think it's going to help him here. Hano is going to count his deck because he does have a Juniper. And, you know, things have slowed down to a halt for Nick. And, ugh, another pass. This is just N at work. And now Hondo, he's just thinking, you know, if I got a catcher, I win. So he's going to Ultra Ball, see if there's a catcher in his deck. If so, game over. Tornadus comes up, and we see a four-prize comeback here from Hondo. So he's going to take a look through his deck with that Ultra Ball, and if there's a, there's a catcher in there, he'll just Juniper and draw it and win, and there is. And Hondo is going to make a ridiculous comeback here in the top eight in this first game. I can't believe it, folks. Uh, he's going to max potion off his Bufalant. There must be a switch in there as well. So there we go. Drawn seven. And let's see. He's got a catcher for the Tornadus EX. He's going to Dynamotor twice to his Zekrom. He actually just got a Gold Breaker. I think there was 80 on the Tornadus already. And he's going to retreat to Zekrom and Bolt Strike for an emphatic 240 damage to end the game. And, you know, Nick, you got to be feeling pretty bad about that one. But uh, that's just end for you. You can never be too comfortable. Honda will take the first game. 
in a very surprising way. And this standard electric Bouffalant Mewtwo Zekrom deck. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can honestly say I did not expect this deck to do very well at state championships. This feels like a deck that's just outdated. But we can see it's just uh, it's a traditional deck. It's It was an archetype for a reason. It's still strong. Surviving the format is tried and true. And Hondo, he's proven me wrong, that's for sure. I thought this version of Electric was long gone. But maybe it's just starting to make a comeback. Who knows? All right. So if you're Nick, you got to be kind of upset with that game. You were so far ahead at the beginning. And it just kind of slipped away. So you got to be upset in that regard. But you were up four prizes. And it wasn't actually that difficult for you to go up four prizes. I mean, honestly... He didn't have a super great start. Remember that turn where he lasered a Bouffalon and then did 10 with blow through? Like, it wasn't a blazing fast start. And he still got out four prizes. So, if he can do that again and then just not get end into nothing, he should probably win this matchup. It's all going to start, it's all going to depend on if he can start with Landorus and start hammerheading early on. I don't know. So Nick, since he did lose game number one, he can go first this game. Uh, remember, in that first game, we did have Hondo start with a lone Tynamo, and he was fortunate enough to go first. So if that happens again here, Nick's going to be the one going first. And there's like eight different Pokemon in his deck that can turn one a Tynamo, uh, including Laser. <laughs> so all sorts of stuff can happen here. So we're just going to wait for these guys to shuffle up, get their decks all randomized and good to go. Let's see here. All right, so these guys will cut each other's decks. And here we go. All right, so they'll draw seven cards. Looks like Hano has a basic. Nick does as well. And Nick will go first versus a Tynamo. Oh, no. But Nick starts with a Bouffalant. That is the only Pokemon in his deck that can't knock out a Tynamo. Are you kidding me? Uh, Hondo might actually survive because he started with a Bouffalant, of all things. Uh, we do have a laser, so it'll at least have 30 on it by the end of the turn. Can Nick do 10 damage to win the game? He's playing a Juniper here. He's going to need a switch, another Pokemon, and a way to attack with it. He has a switch. Does he have it? I don't think he got it. Is Hondo actually going to survive with a lone Tynamo? Are you kidding me? This is the worst thing you could ever have. Lone Tynamo going first, or going second, against a big basic deck with Mewtwo, Tornadus, Landris, Laser, Verbank. And you're going to survive? With your 40 hit point Pokemon, you're actually going to survive? Man, at this point, you got to think, is Hondo just destined to win? If he's surviving all these things, that is kind of ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> wow. So he survives somehow, some way. you got to be kidding me. I am speechless. I thought for sure, with what Nick is playing... With Hondo start, that this game would not go past the first turn. But now we got a game. Uh, and here we go, an Ultra Ball. Now that laser is still pretty impactful. Uh, putting 30 on a Tynamo is huge on the first turn. If Nick can manage to get a Landorus out. He actually didn't even have an energy to attach. And he had to Juniper away two catchers on the first turn. So that's actually really bad. But he can still overpower Hondo if he just charges full steam ahead with Landorus. That could still happen. I don't know, but based on that first turn, how many resources Nick got rid of, the fact that he didn't attach an energy, I honestly might think Hondo has the advantage here now. Hard to tell, but uh, that, that would be my guess. That's for sure. 
So he's going to take a look through his deck with this Ultra Ball. Let's see what he takes. He's eyeing up a Boofalot. That seems like a safe Pokemon to take. 100 hit points. The Boofer ability reduces damage by 20. So there's not much that Nick can pull out of nowhere to knock out a Boofalot in one hit. Also only gives up one prize, so that's good. All right, so he does grab that Boofalot. We have a Double Callus and an Light and an N. All right, so playing the Double Callus there is obviously strong. It threatens a Gold Breaker next turn. Also a little risky. It's going to force him to draw either a Sky Arrow or a Switch in order to pull off, well, Tynamo not getting knocked out by Poison. So uh, you do run the risk here of not getting a Switch or a Sky Arrow and then just losing your Tynamo to a Laser. And that is always annoying to lose a Pokemon to Poison damage. Going back into your opponent's turn, having to promote a new Pokemon, and letting that new Pokemon take a free shot at your, your Pokemon. Uh, that is very annoying. So we'll see if he gets something. And no worries. He's got a switch. He's got a computer search. It's all good. Uh, no problems here for Hondo. That is for sure. All right. So we'll see. He has the switch. What does he want to do with his hand? He has a computer search as well. He also has a max potion. I don't know if he wants to waste that just on the 30 for Tynamo. But knowing that Nick has played... Um, or he's discarded two catchers so far. I don't know. We do see an Ultra Ball. Discarding a Lightning. That is big. You want to get those Lightning Energy in the discard pile as soon as possible with the Electric decks. So you can use Electric's Dynamo ability to pull those energy back out from the discard pile. But he really doesn't have a strong play turn one. This is kind of the downside of... Uh, Electric decks, you know, in a format where a ton of decks just have turn one options, you know, this big basic deck has Landris, Tornadus, Mewtwo, all of that can attack turn one. Darkrai has Sableye to use Junk Hunt, get back items set up further. Electric, uh, well, I guess you have Mewtwo, but Mewtwo is kind of risky, especially when you know your opponent plays Mewtwo, especially when you're only using uh, X-Ball for, what, 20 on a Bouflant? So, oh well. No real aggressive options early on. The best thing you can hope for is like a turn two Gold Breaker, I don't know. All right, so Hondo made an interesting play there. He decided to max potion his Tynamo, which now ensures that it'll get knocked out from Poison coming back into his turn. Uh, he did have a switch in hand, I believe. So uh, the fact that he decided to max potion instead of switch is kind of strange. Uh, I'm not sure what he was fearing there. Maybe he was fearing Landorus. So if he switched out the Tynamo, he uh, wouldn't have been able... Or if he switched the Tynamo to, like, Bouflant, Landorus just could have came up and used Hammerhead and then hit the Tynamo for a knockout. So he just doesn't want Bouffalant to take the damage as well, I'm not sure. But uh, he, he also had to save a card in his hand because he had a computer search. So he had to discard an extra card. But that doesn't matter anymore. Now there's an N. And Nick is going to hope to draw something because his start was pretty bad. Uh, I mean, he had the potential to win turn one. He whiffed. He didn't even get an energy attachment. Now he's got an N Hondo who had a two card hand. He's going to put him up to six cards now. Not a favorable situation, that is for sure. But, you know, Nick can turn this around. Ah, oh, that's not pretty, though. He's going to attach to his Bouffalant just a fighting energy and pass. And Tynamo dies from the laser. <laughs> the poison gets the best of Tynamo. It recovered for a turn, but then it just got knocked out. And now, there's that situation I described in the last game. Buffalo Wars. Here we go. I know it's a, it's a Buffalo Pokemon, but it's just, uh, I just, when I see this, I just imagine videos of two goats ramming into each other until one wears down. Gold Breaker only does 40 to Buffalo because of the Boofer ability. Um, 
And it's not an EX. So you just kind of sit here for a while, especially Hondos, which has EV Light. Then Gold Breaker only does 20. I've been in a situation before where both players had EV Lighted Buffalons, um, and it, nobody won that game, that's for sure. It took forever. 20 at a time is not pretty. Thankfully, he can do 40 at a time. And it looks like he's debating playing an N, and he does play the N. Because, like I said, um, you're really not getting anywhere doing 40 at a time. But we will see. Now Nick's going to get a fresh hand of five cards. And we'll go from here. I mean, Hondo definitely wants to advance his board position. He wants to get an electric into play so he can get more energy into play. Uh, Zekrom is very good against Bufflon, whereas <clears throat> Bufflon is not good against itself. So we'll have to wait and see what these players draw from their end. Honda will get six. Nick will get five. And we do see an electric and a level ball. So, and an ultra ball. So, uh, you got to say, even though Hondo fell behind in the first game, he definitely drew pretty well near the end of the first game, I would say. And in this game, he's drawn pretty well uh, as well. I don't know how many times I can say well. In 30 seconds, but it's a lot. Uh, he he does get a second dynamo out. That's big. He's going to get an electric into play. He can dynamo her, get some more energy into play. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where he decides to put the energy. He might go on Mewtwo, and it, mm, yeah, might he's thinking about it. Uh, yeah, it does. Maybe consider Zekrom. Saying it's it's, uh, it's an easier way to knock out Buffalon, but I guess Mewtwo is going to be better overall. And now this will stop Nick from really benching any of his own Mewtwo's, because uh, it opens up a weird situation where if Hondo can Dynamotor again, uh, maybe get two Lightning in the discard, two Dynamotors, and then a double Colorless, he can just catch her out on Mewtwo and do 200 with X Ball. So it's really just kind of saying, all right, look. I know you play Mewtwo, but I got mine down first. It's got one energy. I'm threatening to knock yours out. Don't even think about putting a Mewtwo down. We're not getting into that. That's pretty much what that does. And it also gives him an option to, you know, if he needs to, X-Ball for a lot of damage one turn. We do see a Skyla from Nick. One thing I've noticed about Nick's deck is that pretty much everything shines in one way or another. We have tons of full arts. Every, I'm pretty sure his deck is completely foiled out. <laughs> uh, he has that foil matrix energy from Emerald, the fighting energy there. Uh, he's got reverse hollow Bufflot, full art Skyla there. Pretty sure that Verbank in his discard is foil. Uh, everything is shiny, that's for sure. It's always cool to see someone actually go all out and actually get all the shiny cards, but uh, you gotta wonder. How much did he pay for this deck? All right, so he grabs a Juniper with his Skyla, and that is, ugh. If he doesn't have another basic here, he is in danger of losing. I don't know. Uh, does he have a basic? And there's a laser. Tails on the laser. What else does he have? Man, this would be a brutal way to lose after starting so well in the first game. Uh, just drawing dead in the second game, that would be very bad. Uh, that would be just, you know, after getting so far in this tournament to lose like that would be just terrible. And he, wow, he has to pass. We see a Skyla from Hondo. He grabs Computer Search, and they shake hands because Nick knows he can just Computer Search for Double Callless. And that's it. Honda wins 2-0, to zero, and this Bufalant Electric deck advances against all odds in a field of Landris, Darkrai, Garbodor, all this stuff. Doesn't matter. Electric will always survive the format, folks, and Honda was just proving that once again. Electric can never die. As long as it's in the format, it's going to stick around, and there's nothing you can do about it. So thanks guys for watching. That is the top eight match. We'll be back with the top four soon. 
I am Puka from the Top Cut. I will update you guys with who is winning and all that good stuff. And hopefully we'll have some more exciting matches. The first game was really good. The second one, um, we'll forget about it. But uh, I'm hoping for some more exciting matches. We are trimming our field down to four players after this round. We've still got some great players left. we got Ross Coffin left in the field. It's anybody's game at this point. We'll be back soon.